Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop mode today. Thinking about today's two things came out, two things are on sale today. But today though, new release wise, there's actually no new uh, big releases that come out in stores. Uh, you know, we'll check to be sure anyway, just to make sure there's nothing different at Walmart or anything, but I actually don't think there's anything whatsoever. There's a bunch of stuff though coming out next week and stuff like the Lighthouse, so lots and lots of stuff, you know, next week, but nothing at all today. But we're still checked to see, you know, if there's any stuff on sales or any of that and stuff like that going on today. Also though, at the end of this video, it's going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really, really cool stuff, so definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. And as always too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed. If you guys have seen them, you know, what you guys thought of them. Also, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. I also want to let you guys know some really cool news. I just got cast in an upcoming film called Compatible, which is directed by Gino Alfonso. And the movie is a film that's done in the style of a film like Unfriended and Searching, where it's you know done through the perspective of the computer and everything. And they have a uh, Kickstarter for the movie where they have like um, you know a DVD pre-order, a bunch of different really cool perks for the movie, producer perks, all kinds of different stuff. So definitely check out the link below for the Kickstarter. It should be a really, really cool movie. Really looking forward to this one. So like I said, definitely check out the link below where you guys can find out more about the movie. But yeah, though, like I was saying though, there was no new uh, big releases, so it's all going to be the stuff from the past weeks here. Like I said, you know, next week there's a whole bunch of stuff, and you know, next month lots and lots of releases coming out. You know, next week is also uh, The Joker, that's like a really big release on uh, next Tuesday. But like I was saying today though, nothing new at all. I'll check over in the section just to see if there's anything else like on sale today or anything like that. But uh, yeah, nothing new, you know, new releases today. Into Walmart we go. Yeah, but over there in the actual section though, at uh, Target though, there was you know, nothing over there. Like I was expecting nothing new. Uh, uh, and I didn't see any like new sales or anything like that, as far as I could tell over there. Because that's the one thing with, with Target though. They don't have as, like, I feel like out of all the places when it comes to movies, they nowadays, most locations have less and less stuff. So you don't see as many sales as often in Target anymore. Like it used to a little bit. I feel like nowadays though, there's much, much less of that there movie wise. But yeah, like I was saying though, over here though, all the same stuff from the weeks past here as well. But we'll take a look though in here to see if there's anything like different. Because I never really like look in these sections in here, like all this kind of stuff that's in here and see if there's anything changed out. Sometimes too in here, you see like, um, like steel books and like interesting things kind of mixed in in here. It's funny, like this is the first time in a while that there was like a Tuesday that I can think of that was like, you know, when everything, because like the one time, of course, you know, it was a Christmas when it was a Tuesday, uh, you know, last year, and then they had no new releases because nothing was open. But I'm surprised there wasn't anything new in store wise at all, not even one title. But yeah, it's like, it's like that today, like absolutely nothing. They still have, um, some of these holiday ones out here like this collection here which is like a home alone one that has all three of them together it's like a walmart exclusive one i've never seen that one it's funny with this they put you know part one and two on blu-ray you know and, and not not of course this is the dvd one but there's they've never put part three on blu-ray a bunch of these like 10 movie sets here it's like Willy Wonka and Dennis the Menace. This is one, I, I can't believe this is yet to get, you know, the Dennis the Menace movie is yet to get a Blu-ray release. I'm really hoping at some point that finally gets one. I, I feel like it's going to be one that would be like a Warner Archive release, like a, you know, a, a Burn On Demand one is what I'm thinking if they ever do it. But yeah, like there's definitely, you know, some interesting different stuff to see when you look in this section, like these film collections here with like Beetlejuice and Corpse Bride and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory one here. But yeah, they don't. They haven't had a bunch of new steelbooks in here in a while. There is like a, a thing over here of some movies, but I think that's all past stuff. That was like like a thing with like it chapter two, and I think that's all older things. But next Tuesday though, this is all going to change out. They so they should be some new stuff. But I always found like I was saying, it's in the weeks past. You always have to check here just to make sure because this is where they kind of put newer things, and it doesn't look like they added anything different or any kind of random 
things in here that I haven't seen in the past. It seems to be all the same stuff. But next Tuesday, though, this whole section should change out. And there should be a bunch of new stuff. So definitely looking forward to seeing what they have. But no new TV today, as far as I can tell. I think the only release that came out was it was official release of the Peanut Butter Solution movie from Severn Films. Which you've got, if you guys have not seen that movie... That's like one of my favorite films as a kid, and it you know just came to Blu-ray. So it's definitely one I would recommend you guys check out. But yeah, definitely don't see anything different. And like I said, I haven't seen any new like Walmart steelbooks that they've gotten in in a while. But yeah, there's a bunch of like stuff on the card over there. But I'm pretty sure that's all old stuff. It's just kind of like it's like it's, it says like stuff that says like Valentine's Day. Yeah, so that's all older things there though. And in here too though, I always look at this. This is like a really cool this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one. I feel like this is the kind of thing, though, if I had to put it together, though, because I've seen videos of people putting this together, I feel like it would be, like, real difficult for me with all these, like, wires you have to put together, but I do really hope, like, I would love if they released The Simpsons game as this, you know, I think that'd be so cool, because that was one of those games as a kid in the arcades and stuff I used to always love to play, so I feel like that'd be such a cool one, you know, for the, you know, the, um, arcaded one up one to do for one of those ones but yeah like i said definitely nothing else in here but still wanted to check you know and i always go out on tuesday just to see but yeah nothing new over here as well but there may be no releases but there is a tower of mayonnaise so they have a tower of mayonnaise condiments but no new movies though and this past weekend, I saw a couple of different films. The first one I saw was the Safdie Brothers' new film, Uncut Gems. If you guys didn't see their last movie, uh, Good Time, which stars Robert Pattinson, that one is a 100% must-watch. That's like, I would say it's probably one of my top favorite movies. I love that movie. Like, everything about that movie was great. Uncut Gems, though, if you guys didn't see my video on the best and worst movies of 2019, that movie was on my list of, you know, uh, best films. And I have to say, I really think that it was probably my top favorite pick. I really do think that because I, everything about the movie I loved, I really, really hope Adam Sandler gets a you know Academy Award nomination for the movie. Like His performance, though, was amazing. It was a really, really different performance for him. And he's done some serious roles before, but just everything that he does in the movie was so much so different. And it's like this... This absolutely intense film about his character who is you know works in the diamond district in, in you know New York and he owns this um, jewelry store where people come in with appraisals and everything and his character though is somebody that has all these types of addictions to gambling and he's like owes money to everybody and the second he gets money he goes and takes bets and then people are coming after him so he's constantly having people coming after him and it's essentially though in the beginning of this movie though he acquires this huge gem uh, and he has this uh, you know huge figure that he believes that it's worth and it's like it's kind of about like um everything that can kind of go wrong and it's about like um just like I said with him and all these debts and the, the movie just has this insane tense quality to it which just keeps on getting more and more intense as the movie goes along but everything about the movie the way it's shot the way the Safdie brothers though edit their films I really love them because they're really quick paced movies uh, you know and the music is really cool and it has just like the lighting and everything it's like a hundred percent must watch movie the other movie that I saw was a film which I wasn't, wasn't sure going into it what I was gonna think and another one I really really liked and it was a um, bombshell you know it stars Charlize Theron and you know um, uh, you know uh, Nicole Kidman and Margot Robbie and it's pretty much about you know all the go-ons at Fox News with you know with Roger Ailes and all the kind of stuff that he was up the terrible things he was up to and uh, you know it's a, but it's like kind of all the stuff that was going on there and he, like his downfall and like you know being removed from Fox News and kind of all that, that went on and everything but um, performance wise though everybody did a really great job but I thought the standout was John Lithgow like he was like great and he had like some of these great lines and stuff like they were like crazy the things that he was saying and like it, it was it, you know because he was talking about like I didn't always look like this and like I don't know he was just great you know but everybody though did a great performance I also thought Margot Robbie did a really really good job in the movie as well but if you guys got to see either of those films though let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of them or you know let me know what you guys saw this past weekend if you guys got to uh, you know check anything out into fries we go yeah I want to go in here though and check and see like how picked over things are now because I was in here I think like 
maybe like a month ago, a little over a month ago, and things were like totally like, they were so, like so, everything on the shelves was so picked over. So like I've said in the past, I think Fry's, and a lot of people in the comments were saying how their locations are like this as well. I don't know if they're gonna like continue much more, which is a shame because this place, in the, you know, back in the day when I first moved out here, like when a new release came out, like they were kind of like Tower Records was back in the day. You know, Tower Records, are, of course, are gone, but they were like one of those places where they would like order everything, so you could like find anything, like obscure stuff, catalog titles and stuff. But like last time I was in here, it was so picked over, and there was like nothing and like no movies, like hardly any. So let's see what's left now. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see though, you know, what's going on in here. Because I feel like, you know, after, you know, the holidays, like with Christmas and everything, I feel like whatever was left is probably going to be even more and more picked over than it was. But there is so much, like, weird stuff to, like, fill spaces, like karaoke machines. And, like, and you see, like, here, like, the movies. It's, like, just, like, a, some random seasons of House here. And then, like, look at how picked over this is. It's like this, I think it's this one line now. So now they've dwindled it down to one line here, and this is all that's left of the movies. And like, but back, you know, you know, even up until like a year or so ago, you could come in here and find stuff. It, they, it is cool though. You can find like Arrow video titles and stuff, but there definitely doesn't seem like they've gotten any new ones or anything like that in a while in here, which is a shame though. So I, I really think though, they're gonna probably, you know, if they do continue and stay, you are not gonna see movies in here anymore. But it, they still do though have, like I said, a lot of Arrow video stuff in here, like Hills Have Eyes and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's definitely, gotten even more picked over and they definitely are not getting new releases at all. I think they've just, like I said, decided not to carry anything new at all because there's definitely nothing new here whatsoever. But like I said, a lot of horror stuff like Doom Asylum and Maniac and that kind of stuff in here and Blood Rage. So yes, yeah, so, so there are some horror stuff still left though. But like I was saying though, like look at the products. Like see, here's like the um, what's the, the refrigerators and like washers and dryers. And look, that's like all there is. Like that's it. And look at how like picked over this all is. And like all the aisles in here are like this, where they have like spaces and all these gaps. So you see like empty gaps, and all these are totally empty down here. So it's it's just crazy because I remember coming out here. Like look, this seems to be like the extent of the TVs. Like just like right here, like that, and they have like caution tape like not to go back there just very sad to see this place because it you know like I said when I first moved out here this was like a really cool place and they had so much stuff this was like the place to go and now it's just turned into like totally empty and abandoned like I said lots and lots of karaoke machines and things like this to try and like fill the space in here but it's they still do have like this cafe in here though but yeah like look at this like it's Look at, look at all this emptiness. It's, 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 this really is too bad. Into Best Buy we go. But in here though, I actually do see one thing that came out and I saw something saying this this was releasing this week, but then I saw other places say that it was next Tuesday. This is the new Nicolas Cage movie Primal. I'm gonna have a review of this one though at the end of this video. I actually really like this one, so at least there is something new to see today. Like I said, for some reason I thought this was next Tuesday because I saw some places listing it as next week, but I think because uh, I just looked on Best Buy's website and it looks like this one you know, did release today. So like I said, this one here is $16.99. But I actually like this one a lot. But other than that, though, all the stuff here is from the past weeks. They had like an ad thing here advertising on the 14th from Maleficent, you know, uh, Mistress of Evil coming out on Blu ray and 4K. They still do have some of the um, Rambo Last Blood Steel books here as well. We'll check over this section as well to see if there's anything else over there, though. But yeah, though, over here, though, all the same stuff. They still have some of the holiday stuff left out here. But yeah, this is all the stuff from last week and everything here. So yeah, in the past couple weeks. So yeah, nothing else over here. But yeah, at least they had one thing out today. And like I said, for some reason, I, I was, wasn't sure it was today because I saw some places listing though that as um, next week. But yeah, like, um, but next week though, there's gonna be a bunch of new stuff out though. 
Yeah, and I actually just checked on Amazon and Primal is showing on there as well, uh, you know, coming out today. So at least there was one new thing out. Like I said, I'm talking about that one at the end of this video, my review of that one. But anyway, though, guys, like I always say, if you guys enjoy these DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below, too, letting me know if you guys ended up picking up anything today on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K. You know, uh, and, and like definitely check out, too, the Kickstarter for the film uh, Compatible. And I'll have a link below for that one. But anyway, Hello guys, like I always say, thanks so much for the support for the videos. Now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Arrow Video, and this one is from the Arrow Academy line. This is one I just want you guys to know is available. It's a movie here called uh, Black Angel. This one is from uh, 1946. This has on here, though, a brand new restoration from the original film elements by Arrow Films. It has on here a brand new Conte track on here with writer and film scholar Alan K. Rode. It has a uh, brand new video appreciation by film historian Neil Sinyard, as well as a theatrical trailer and a gallery of original stills and promotional uh, materials in this one. Also in here, it has... A um, booklet in here which has some you know facts about the production about the cast some stills and all that kind of stuff in here like I said though just want the guys to know that this one was available from the uh, Arrow Academy line the next one here is from uh, Shout Factory and this is one I had not seen in a long time and it's a really fun movie this is from the Shouts uh, Shout Select line and this is the movie that stars uh, Richard Pryor and John Candy uh, Brewster's Millions this is a really really fun movie this is basically though about um Richard Pryor's character, who is on this um, like kind of a minor league uh, baseball team, and his friend is uh, on the team with him as you know as well, and it's play his friend is played by John Candy, and uh, one day Richard Pryor's you know character finds out though that his like uh, distant I think it was like his distant uncle uncle had died, and he was this guy who had like millions upon millions upon millions of dollars, this super rich guy, one of the richest people in the world, and he he actually left the money to Richard Pryor's character, but there was a stipulation where how many million was it, it was he yet he, he basically though within one month Richard Pryor has to spend 30 million dollars and if he spends 30 million dollars he ends up getting 300 million dollars but he can't tell anybody that, that he has to spend this money uh, in order to you know get this this huge amount of money so basically, though, he can't tell his best friend John Candy's character. He can't tell uh, the woman who's in charge of keeping track of his finances. And he also can't use the money in certain ways. Like, he can't just go and, like, give somebody, like, you know, uh, $5 million. Or, you know what I mean? He, he has to, like, everything has to be accountable. And it has to be, like, he can't do, like, really... He has all these certain things that he can't do with the money. And he can't, like, um, by the end of the 30 days, too, he can't own anything. So his character has to basically have nothing, have all the money totally gone, he can't own a house, he can't own property, he can't own cars, so all the money has to be used on things like food, and like uh, he can give a certain amount to charity, but it's basically though, this whole big um, situation of Richard Pryor's character trying to figure out exactly how he's going to spend this money, and then at the same time too, not have everyone around him think like what is like you know you know looking at him like what is he doing why is he spending this money so crazy he's gonna lose all the money that he has but like I said he can't tell anybody and it's just a really really fun movie always really like this one and it has on here though a brand new commentary on here with film critics um, on this one who are hosts of the podcast uh, critically acclaimed it also has a brand new interview with screenwriter uh, Herschel Win Wingard it also includes Brewster's Millions a 1945 adaption starring Dennis O'Keefe and Helen Walker and, and on this one as well. It also includes a theatrical trail and a still gallery. But if this is one of those ones, if you guys have never seen this before, really, really fun movie. It also has in here too, uh, reversible artwork, which has the original uh, poster artwork, which I always love this original image, uh, you know, the original poster artwork for the movie, which was, you know, Richard Pryor and then John Candy. And John Candy's wearing like this suit of um, money. Like I said, I feel like this is one of the... Um, John Candy movies too that you don't hear about as often and it's a really underrated but really fun movie. Uh, the next one here is from Lion's Gate and this is a movie that stars Nicolas Cage called uh, Primal and this was an interesting movie. This is um it's basically though about Nicolas Cage's character who is like this guy who's like a big game hunter like he goes out to the jungle hunting for like you know to, basically he collects animals that he ends up going and selling to people like he looks for like rare uh, you know uh, um, like a jaguar which is what he finds in 
the beginning of this movie, this really rare jaguar that's going to be worth a million dollars to the right buyer. He buys like he like finds snakes out in the in the jungle. He basically just camps out and like waiting to find these animals. And then he, you know, in the beginning of this movie, though, he's leaving South America and he has like this um a uh, whole big like jeep full of all these animals that he's found, and he's going to take them to uh, this huge boat where he's going to be going, you know, to get to I think Mexico to sell the stuff. But right when he gets to the boat and he's loading his animals on there, uh, it's kind of like um you see like these police coming and this guy who's chained up and he's like a prisoner and he's basically he's going to be transported on the boat and Nicolas Cage's character is like who is this person what is he doing on here you know I got to get there I have a schedule I got to get these things to the buyers and all these kind of things and of course this the guy that comes on to the uh, you know to the boat that have, where, where all the police are along and all this kind of stuff like the government and everything watching this guy uh, basically though what ends up happening though is without spoiling anything is this guy you know being on the boat this criminal criminal is not good because he ends up doing something with the animals and one of in this insane jaguar that he caught is loose on the boat and it's basically about this criminal loose on the boat and the jaguar loose on the boat and uh, other animals as well and it's basically this whole nightmare of a situation about Nicolas Cage's character trying to find this jaguar and then they're trying to find the criminal on the boat and it's like a really crazy you know and there's also some really interesting fight scenes because the director has done like some um, like action choreographed a lot of like be, you know, really big action movies. So there's a lot of like, you know, big fight scenes and stuff on this one. But on here though, it has a making of it, has interviews with some of the cast members talking about the production and everything, but really pretty interesting movie here. The next one here is from Lionsgate as well, and this is also an A24 title. And this is a movie here called The Lighthouse, which stars, um, you know, Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. This is from the director who did uh, The Witch. And this was all shot too. I love the way this was shot because it was shot with old equipment like old cameras, old lenses, original like early film stock from the 30s to and I think it was like the late 20s, early 30s to look to have that real look to this. And it's basically though, I don't know if it if it really says exactly when it's set for sure, but it's sometime in the late 1800s. I think it, it says 1890s, but they don't really say for sure in the movie though. Like they leave it real vague on exactly where it is and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of like that they kind of leave it up in the air. But basically though, um Wim Dafoe's character is this lighthouse, lighthouse keeper who's basically in charge of, you know, fixing, making sure the light doesn't go out and oiling the lamp and all these kind of different things. And Rod Pattinson's character comes there to work. Uh, and he's like, you know, um, going to be there for a number of months with, you know, Wim Dafoe. And Wim Dafoe's character is this massive alcoholic. He's like continuously drinking. He has all these like, you know, phobias about like, oh, if you ever kill a goal and all this, you'll be haunted and all these type of things. And uh, Rod Pattinson's character, when he first goes in there to like look where he's going to be sleeping and stuff, he finds this like mermaid, like little mermaid statue, which kind of comes to play in this movie. And it's essentially though about... Willem Dafoe's character kind of being like having this like abusiveness to him and like kind of like telling him what to do giving him no ends of problems and it's kind of like them together and it's kind of like this it's it's very hard to explain but it's like this spiral of events of all sorts of like um drinking and things getting crazier and crazier and all these like you know uh, inter, you know intricate visuals and the way it's shot like I said that shooting it in you know this uh, you know old school black and white like I said like the 30s that gives it this really Really, really cool look and like I said it wasn't like shot and like you know made to look older it was actually shot with these old equipment and old cameras and everything to give it that real old school vibe like it really feels like this lost like movie from the like late 20s early 30s it has that kind of vibe to it acting wise too I thought it was really well acted it also too throws in a lot of comedic aspects in this one as well it's like has this you know, dark tone, and then it gets broken up by a lot of, like, these crazy, like, goofy things that are kind of mixed in to the movie as well, but it has on here, though, a making of on here, as well as a commentary track on here with the director, as well as uh, deleted scenes, but a really, really cool movie. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Quiver, uh, uh, you know, Distribution. It's another Nicolas Cage movie here. This stars Nicolas Cage and Lawrence Fishburne. This is called uh, Running with the Devil. This is a movie all about um, the um, kind of about drugs and it's like um, the whole process of like drugs and how, um, you know, um, 
like the value kind of goes up when it starts off in South America, how it starts off a lower number and then kind of it goes up and up and up as it gets to different destinations and kind of like that's one of the big aspects because Nicolas Cage's character is like this guy who owns like a car dealership, but he also, I th believe it was a car dealership, unless I'm mixing this up, but he had like a, like this company that he worked for, was it a car dealership or no, no, it was a restaurant. He had a restaurant, but then he like um, sold these drugs and it was kind of like um, one of the people that worked for him was Lawrence Fishburne's character and Lawrence Fishburne's character though is doing sort of um weird stuff when he's like it was like mixing it with this other type of drug and um kind of people were overdosing from it and there's these great crazy scenes of Lawrence Fishburne like you know on drugs and stuff and it's like the way they did it was kind of like Wrecking for a Dream kind of a little bit it had that kind of vibe to the, some of the scenes with him because he plays this really different kind of character I thought the character that Lawrence Fishburne was playing like a really really different kind of role for him I thought he did a really good job but it's just basically though all about the whole process of and like um who else was in here um I think Clifton Collins Jr. was in here, and he was coming from South America with a with a package, and it was kind of like I said, it goes through the whole process of like the money, and then like trying to the police they're investigating, you know, these overdoses that are going on, and trying to get to the bottom of who is involved with these, and exactly why is this happening, and it's like this new strain of drugs. It's a really really interesting uh, film here, like I said, and it was just all kind of the whole thing that was going on. And the next two I got here are from MovieZing.com, and I have a link below. Where you guys can order these ones for the best price. This one is also. For from Universal, and this here is a Bulletproof 2, the unrated edition. Now, this one is really, really hard to explain exactly how this sequel exists, you know, the context of this. So, essentially, though, Bulletproof, which, you know, the original film, which starred Damon Wayans and Adam Sandler. Now, in this universe, that is, an act is actually a movie, and these are the real guys, that they, you know that you know that that was that was a movie that was based on these two real guys. They say that's in the very beginning of this movie, like real quick. They show like a magazine article and they and they mention about the movie. They're like saying to Faison Love's character, "Yeah, they made a movie about you and about you and your your you know what happened with you and uh, Adam Sandler's character and all that kind of stuff." So basically, though, uh, you know, this is the real Damon Wayans and this is the real Adam Sandler. That's kind of how they're explaining. It. And the real Damon Wayans, of course, is played by Faison Love, and then Kirk Fox. Fox plays Adam Sandler's character. And essentially, though, uh, you know, what had happened in the first movie had happened to them. Uh, you know, Damon Wayne's, you know, a phase in love's character was, you know, was a, was a cop and still is a cop. And he went undercover to, um, you know, get information from Adam Sandler's character and, of course, didn't tell him and all that kind of stuff. And both of them now, though, you know, for over 20 years have not seen each other. They had, like, a bad falling out and haven't spoke. And Damon Wayne's, you know, character, like I said, is played by Phase on Love, and that's the real him, is basically sent to South America. America because there's these cartels there and um, when he gets there though he finds that he has to work again with Kirk Fox you know who's you know the real uh, Adam Sandler character like I said this is hard to explain but basically though they end up working together again and like they have all sorts of problems and disagreements and they still haven't really aren't getting along well and so it's kind of like the whole thing that they're going through but like I said it's an interesting way that they explained you know this sequel and everything and like you know how they how this is the real them and everything the next one here is from Movie Zing uh, dot com as well and this is also from uh, the Mer uh, Meridian uh, releasing group and this is uh, Swamp Zombies 2 which I've never seen the first uh, Swamp Zombies movie I think it, when I was looking it up I think it came out in like um 2006 or 7 or something like that I believe and this is basically though about like a um, there was a, a zombie outbreak that's going on and there's like a reality TV show where they have like um about like sort of like a uh, I guess like a challenge type show where they like film everything you do and you go out into the woods and stuff like that and like these challenges and stuff and on this show they're having like a zombie challenge show where people are sent out into the um, the woods to kind of hunt these zombies down and then they film the whole thing and like broadcast on the air and everything and this one guy is sent there and um, Mr. Lobo who's like on YouTube and stuff like that I've seen some of his stuff and he's been in some cinema sickness videos and stuff like that uh, you know he's in here acting I thought he did a good job in this movie and it's basically though like he's like this crazy scientist and stuff like that he's like doing these weird experiments and everything it's like this one guy who's like trying to uh you know take down these zombies and stuff like that it's like a fun like um like i said done like a reality it's basically like a reality type show that they're on uh, you know hunting zombies and stuff like that Next one's here, a whole bunch of new stuff from uh, Vinegar Syndrome. Some really, really cool releases. The first one, this is a movie that I had not seen in years. I think I rented this movie 
probably when I think it released in either t 1993 or 1994. So I read this movie as a little kid, and I remember I, that, and I probably have not seen this movie since probably like 95. It's been years since I've seen this movie. And what's cool is uh, Vinegar Syndrome uh, has released this as a um, an R-rated cut or an unrated cut, which is like super gory and everything. And this is the, also their fir first ever 4K release. And I really hope they do more 4K releases. And this is uh, Tammy and the T-Rex, which, you know, stars Denise Richards and Paul Walker. And, um... Also, the one actor, too, from um, Children of the Corn, he's in here. Uh, and also, um, you know, um, Sean Whalen, he's in the movie, you know, best known, I would say, for playing uh, Roach and People Under the Stairs. And this is basically, though, about, like, um, and also, too, uh, Terry, um, I never remember his last name, but the one who played Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's, he's in this movie as this crazed uh, doctor who's doing his experiments, and he built, like, this uh, robotic dinosaur, and he's trying to find a brain to, like, bring this dinosaur to life. And basically, though, uh, Paul Walker's character, though, he has, like... Um, you know, he starts you know, seeing Denise Richards' character, and they start dating, and, like, Denise Richards' character's ex-boyfriend, like, really, really doesn't like her seeing anybody else, and basically what happens, though, is he ends up uh, taking Paul Walker's character and dropping him off in, like, this wild animal park, and he gets attacked by this uh, tiger out there, and then he gets taken to the hospital, and when he's in the hospital, though, uh, the, the crazed doctor who wants to find a brain for his dinosaur ends up kidnapping him and making it like he died, and puts his brain inside this dinosaur and that the dinosaur comes to life and he's basically going and getting revenge and coming after the bully and all this kind of stuff and he's trying to find these richards character it's a really really fun movie and, and like what's like i said what's cool is this has on here the um unrated cut which is like when i look at this cut i'm thinking man i can't believe they were able to cut this down back in the day to pg-13 because it was it's a really gory movie and there's a lot of you know uh, uh you know f-bombs and stuff like that like a lot so I'm, I, I need to look back at the pg-13 cut because it has on here on the blu-ray it has the pg-13 cut of the movie uh, in a, like a vhs quality version of it but on here though this has a brand new 4k restoration from the 30, 35 millimeter uh, negative it has on here which was really cool too it has an interview on here uh, with, which I was so cool that they got her to talk about the film, was Denise Richards. She's on here talking about the movie, as well as Sean Whalen has an interview on here uh, with uh, 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 George Pilgrim on here. And like I said, it has a PG-13 cut of the movie. 4K-wise, though, Vinegar Syndrome, though, always does an amazing job cleaning up their movies. And like this on 4K looks amazing. And like I mean, it looks like a new movie. And I really, really hope Vinegar Syndrome starts, you know, continues releasing 4Ks here and there for certain things because you know their transfers are some of the best and like the transfer on here like I said is amazing this is just such a fun movie also has a commentary track on here with the director and the producer but if you guys have never seen this movie this is definitely a must watch I, I just thought this was such a fun movie and the next one I got here is from Vinegar Syndrome as well and it's a movie here called Spookies which is one I was so excited that Vinegar Syndrome released this on Blu-ray this is a really really fun uh, crazy movie and it was like one of those movies where it was filmed and then like uh, and I'll talk more about this and then one of the, the features that, that deals with this but it was filmed and then like a lot of people thought back in the day that it was um two movies cut together and that's why it has this disjointed quality to it but it was actually shot and then the producer came in and hired another person to direct it and she ended up shooting these other scenes with other actors because they didn't get the actors back and it has this weird quality and you could kind of tell uh you know what was different but it's basically about this group of these people and they, they're they coming together, uh, and they end up going into this house, and in there they find this kind of Ouija board and un unleash these, like, um, uh, these uh, monsters in the house, and they're, like, trapped in there with these weird monsters, and there's some really, really cool monsters in here, like some amazing uh, uh, creature effect work in this movie. But it's basically, though, it has on here, which is really cool, it's a two-disc set, and then on here, the Blu-ray, uh, the second disc, has all these features and it has a documentary on the making of this movie which talks all about you know to the the um, people involved the actors the producers and all that kind of stuff talking about how the movie was filmed and then these the producer of the movie he ended up having coming into the editing room and like making all these changes and then basically like people quit because of it 
Then he hired this other person to film these other scenes. And they talk all about this and how the movie was like was totally recut and all these shots were taken out and all the um, creature work. There was all these other things that they didn't use. And it's a it's, it's a absolutely a 100% must-watch documentary on here. There's also a documentary, too, on the producer as well talking about his label. You know, uh, but it's a really, really great documentary. Like, it's absolutely 100% must-watch. Uh, and on here, though, it has a bunch of other features as well. It has outtakes and bloopers. It has behind-the-scenes still gallery. It has a Q&A from the 2015 uh, horror show screening on this one. It has a 2015 Al 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 Alamo Draft House screening with introductions by Spooky's director on this one, as well as the co-writer and producer, Frank M. Farrell. But a really, really fun movie. I highly recommend you guys check this out. It also is uh, newly scanned and restored in 4K from its original 35mm camera negative. Picture quality in this movie looks great. But it's just a really, really fun movie, and it's just, it, it, it's sad to hear about all the kind of stuff that went on behind the scenes and all these kind of things, but it's, it, it, I'm glad that, because like I said, there was a lot of mystery behind the movie, and I'm glad they finally were able to tell the story and clear up all the kind of stuff. The other movie here from Vinegar Syndrome is a movie here called The Candy Snatchers, which is one that I always like this movie. It kind of has a vibe a little bit. It came out in 1973. So it's around the time when like Last House on the Left came out. So it kind of has a sort of a sort of a Last House on the Left kind of feel to this, like House on the Edge of the Park, which came later. But it has that sort of feel, but more like that mixed with some goofy kind of aspects in this one as well. Um, and it's basically though about this um, girl that ends up being kidnapped by these three people and they have these plans because the girl's father owns like these the, um you know, he has this jewelry place, and they end up basically wanting to hold her for ransom. But the guy, though, he's like not, you know, he's actually the stepfather, and he kind of doesn't like her and kind of wants her gone. And it becomes this whole big thing. It's a crazy movie because they, they bury the girl, like, in the ground with this pipe coming out of the ground. It's a really crazy movie. It's really, really well done, though. But I always really like this movie, and it's a really super underrated one you really don't hear about too often. It has on here, though, newly scanned and restored in 4K and for original 35 million millimeter camera negative it has an interview on here with the director an interview with actor vince uh, martirano it has an interview on here with the producer um commentary track on here with film historian nathaniel thompson promotional still uh still an art uh archival uh article gallery on this one but it, one of these other ones i really like this one as well, like I said, you don't hear about that too often. Now, these ones, though, uh, when you order these ones from Vinegar Syndrome, Syndrome, Syndrome's website, these are um, you get them in a um, hardbound case. But since these are review copies, I just have the discs. But these are a series of films here called the the Angel Films, and I I don't know if there are any more. I believe there are only three films in the series, and it has Angel, uh, Avenging Angel, and Angel Three: The Final Chapter. Uh, the the first Angel movie, the one I'm going to talk about, is um. So there's the actress who was in uh, Jaws 2, you know, the one like on the, the stuff with the boat and everything like that at the end. She was like throughout the movie, but this is uh, one of the other films that she was in. And this is basically though about her character is like she's a high school student and she goes and like as a, you know, a call girl, working girl, girl at night. And it's kind of about at the same time there's like this serial killer. And this is kind of like something that she's doing secretly and people don't know about it. But it's like this crazy serial killer going on and it's kind of like she's coming across all these different types of bad guys on the street and all sorts of kind of problems. It's a really cool movie. I saw this one years and years back. So it's cool that they, you know, put all these movies together in this collection like this. I mean, I'll, get, I'll go to some of the features, though. It has, um, all of them, though, are newly restored from the, you know, in... Um, well, the you know the first movie is in 4K, restored in 4K. The uh, other two are restored to 2K. And then the first movie though has a interview on here with the writer and director, interview with with Donna Wilkes, interview on here with the co-writer, has an interview with the composer, theatrical trailers for all the films, deleted scenes and outtakes. Uh, part two has on here though um, interview on here with the uh, the uh, co-writer and co-director, interview with Betsy Russell, uh, theatrical trailers, and then on the third film it has um, commentary track on here uh, on here with from Rapid Heart TV uh, stills gallery and the theatrical trailers as well and the last one here from Vinegar Syndrome and this one I just covered it up just so no one says anything and these movies uh, star uh, you know Ginger Lynn and uh, Linnea Quigley I think Linnea Quigley though I don't believe is in the third movie and these are movies that are directed by um, uh, Rick Sloan Rick um, 
I always mixing up his name. You know, Rick Sloan, you know, who directed um, Hobgoblins. And then um, I always forget the name of the, like, it was called, like, the movie that he filmed in the movie theater, which I really liked uh, as well. I think he did that. I think that might have been his first movie. And this is uh, Vice Academy 1 through uh, 3. I think there was six of these films I believe I was looking it up I believe there may have been six in total but these are the ones that had Linnea Quigley and Ginger Lynn and this is basically around this time too there was a lot of like um like Vice Squad kind of movies there's a number of different ones there was like um this crazy one I saw recently that came out in the 80s a number of different like Vice Squad kind of things and this is basically though about um Linnea Quigley's character and Ginger Lynn's character is like go, you know going undercover and stopping the bad guys and it's a really you know fun series of movies it's like some crazy stuff that happens on these ones these ones are uh, all restored in 2k from their original 35 millimeter camera negatives as on here commentary tracks with the director on all three films has an interview on here with Linnea Quigley, an interview with uh, Ginger Lynn. This one's also limited to 3,000 copies. This has also brand new artwork by Tom Hodge of the Dude Designs. It also includes a poster as well. I'm just not going to show the poster just so no one says anything about it. But like I said, this is a uh, two-disc set which includes you know films uh, one through three of the series. The next ones here are all from uh, Via Vision, and these ones are all region free. So you guys can these are Australian releases, but they're region free, so you guys can watch these ones no problem in any U.S. Uh, DVD or Blu-ray player. There's no region code locking or anything like that. And this here is the um, Blu-ray collection here of Channel Z the complete uh, collection here. This is a really cool uh, series. It's kind of like American Horror Story, where each season is its own series, where it's like you, you wouldn't have to have seen the other ones to, you know, understand the show or anything like that. They're, they're each, each you know, season, all four seasons are different stories, and they don't have, like, any connections to the other one where, oh, you wouldn't be able to understand it. Because, like, with horror stories, though, uh, some of the seasons, though, kind of uh, hint back to stuff like that, but this is one of those ones where it's its own series. And these are some really creepy, creepy stuff that happens in these shows. Uh, the first one, though, uh, the first season one was uh, Channel Zero, Candle Cove. And that one was... Um dealing with this town where they had this really weird uh like public access kind of like kids tv show and uh it's kind of like thing that kind of haunted the town and weird things are going on from the show to people around in the town this one has on here uh, deleted scenes and then the second season was um channel zero at uh at the um, no end house and this was about uh people that moved into this um was this one when they moved into uh, it's like a house when they end up in like different rooms. Basically, these people go into this this basement, and they kind of end up in all these kind of weird rooms. And the rooms kind of like know things about their past. And then uh, Butcher's Block. I think Butcher's Block is probably my favorite. Uh, this is the third season, and this is basically though about this this, this town where. Um, um, Basically, they had like this this uh, slaughterhouse there, and this weird family that was at the slaughterhouse with this weird history behind it, and these weird um, kind of like steps to this door that this one girl who's like in the town like discovered, and it basically like weird things are coming from it and coming after her and stuff. It's a really crazy show. And then the most recent season, which is the, the final season of the show, was uh, the season four. This was a couple that ends up moving back into, uh, you know, the couple that was married. Uh, uh, she moves back into her husband's, um, you know, house where her, where he grew up as a kid, and because her father, his father passed away, and when they go down there, they're kind of looking around the basement, and they just don't notice anything, you know, they don't, you know, anything weird, and then later they go back down, and all of a sudden there's this door, uh, to the. Um, you know, the door that appeared in this basement and they're trying to get this door open. It's this big to-do to try and open it up. And of course, though, there's like this weird type of crazy clown, kind of like the clown kind of creature that comes out, you know, comes after them and like attacking people. It's a, a crazy, these, like I said, these are really creepy shows. The um, the guy too, who's playing the uh, clown kind of uh, in this was on, it was on um, America's Got Talent who can like bend in those like uh, crazy flexible ways. Like when I saw him on America's Got Talent, I'm like, I know this guy is going to end up in movies and TV and all this kind of stuff. And he's been lots of stuff. He's like one of the best at doing that kind of stuff. He was in um, a Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark recently, playing one of the creatures that can kind of bend backwards and everything. But these are definitely really, really cool shows. And these ones do not have uh, Blu-ray releases in the U.S. So really glad to have these ones on Blu-ray. And the next one here is from Via Vision as well here. And this is uh, The Act Season 1 here on DVD. Now this one is region-free as well. You guys can watch this one no problem on any U.S 
a DVD or a Blu-ray player. Now this one, I'm going to be careful how I explain this one because I feel like not everyone is going to know this story. But this is going to, you know, from the same creator though as um, uh, Channel Zero. And this is going to be an anthology series where each season is going to be a true crime story. I don't know what the next season is going to be. I don't know if they've announced it yet, what the story will be. Uh, but this one is, this story though, in the, this, in the first season, you know, it stars Patricia Arquette and Joey King. And this is about Gypsy Rose and her mother. And about this relationship with Gypsy Rose and her mother, and and her you know Gypsy Rose is played by Joey King, and her mother is played by Trisha Arquette, and you know they both great, they gave these amazing performances in the show. This show is all based on these great performances, and it's basically though about Gypsy Rose, who um, you know her mother was always telling her that she was sick. She was basically feeding her through a tube. She was like saying that she couldn't walk. She was saying that she had all these kind of sicknesses and diseases and all these kind of things, and she was always going on TV and like. Um, you know, t telling about how this condition and make a wish and getting money for her daughter and all these kind of things. And you find out that this whole thing was a sham. And this whole thing was kind of this craziness that, um, the mother was saying and like using this whole thing. And without saying too much more though, Gypsy Rose though, you know, uh, wasn't able to go out and do anything. She was basically kind of like trapped in the house, but she ends up meeting somebody online in this chat room. And basically, though, from there, it leads to kind of what happens. And that's all I want to say, because like I said, I feel like a lot of people do, probably don't know this story. So I don't want to ruin anything, but it is a really, really good show. Like, it, it's a show that was on uh, Hulu. But it's one that I would I'm really glad to have a DVD of this one, too. But um, if you guys have seen this one, let me know what you guys thought. But this is one, like I said, I don't want to say more about it, but a really well-done show, really well-acted. Chloe Sevigny is also in the show as well. Uh, the next one here is from Viavision as well. And it's a, a show which I had never seen before, and I just started watching this. It's actually a pretty cool show called Impulse. And this is the complete first season of the show. And this, is, I believe, is on uh, YouTube Red, is where this uh, originally aired. Uh, and this is basically, though, about this uh, girl begin this movie though you see like these two guys like t like fighting and they're like teleporting and like they're all, all of a second they're in the Antarctic and they're second they're on a train and another place and you know that there's some type of a power thing going on and it's about this girl who's in high school who basically moved to uh, Wisconsin when did she move it's to New York and she's like new like or been newer there or something like that but she ends up like um, there with her sister and basically though she's having these kind of things happen where she's having these seizures all of a sudden, it can't really be explained, but because of it, she's not able to drive anymore. They had to take her license away until they can figure out exactly why this is happening. It starts happening more and more often. But the one day, though, when she's with this guy, because of something that he's doing, she ends up uh, something happens uh, that's different than the other seizures where the car kind of cracks, the windows crack, the, and then all of a sudden she like teleports and she's back in her room. And she's like realizing what is going on here. She can't figure this whole thing out. The guy was like injured terribly. He's in the hospital. And it's kind of like her discovering that something is going on. And then you see too... Um, this guy is like hunting down people that have this kind of condition. So you know that he's going to be coming for her. And it's a really, really interesting show. Really, really well put together and well shot and everything. Like I said, I had never heard of this one and really liked this one. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Double Ganga Releasing. It's a movie here called uh, Double Ganga Releasing and Bloody Disgusting presents um, Gags the Clown. And I really love the um, artwork on this one, like the, the um, you know cover art for this. This is basically though about. Um, in Wisconsin, there's this clown that's kind of popping up, and people are like seeing him. They're seeing him like on the side of the road, and it's become like this viral trend. Like people are posting pictures about it. People are talking about it all over the world, and like sharing it all around. And this is all done found footage style. About and it's not all like the same person's camera. It's like a news camera. It's like people's cell phones. It's someone like live streaming on the internet. It's all these different kind of things, and it all takes place on this night. And it's like this guy who has like a uh, like a live streaming show and he's sick and tired of these sightings and he wants to go out and track down this clown and find it and get to the bottom of it it follows around this woman who's a newswoman she's trying to cover the story and then like uh, she's going around trying to interview people about it and like try and track down this guy and she wants to follow the guy that wants to t take down the clown and then it follows like these teens and it's kind of like all these type of stuff and it, it starts off too at the beginning of these people like in this um in this you know um 
parking lot and they're like getting attacked by the clown and this clown too has like these weird type of powder that's in the balloons and it's like making people act really strange and like be they doing these crazy things it's just a crazy like clown movie like a creepy creepy clown movie has on here though feature and uh, short uh, commentaries with the filmmakers it has on here gags the original short film it has on here though some behind the scenes featurettes a gag reel on this one but a really fun like found footage crazy clown movie the next one here is from uh, screen media and this is a uh, crown uh, Vic which stars uh, Thomas Jane and this was basically though about um Thomas Jane, who's this cop, who's been a cop for like a number of years, and he ends up taking in the um, this guy played by Luke Clent Clentank. I don't know how to say his name for sure, but he basically though like comes to the precinct to like pick this guy up, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna be uh, taking you around the night and show you the ropes, and you know, because this guy is like his first time like on the street, you know, as a cop, he's like gonna be like driving around. It's like his first time on duty, like when he's gonna like be with a partner, and Thomas Jane's character is kind of gonna be the one who's like, you know, taking him around." showing him all the different the stuff like that but basically though Thomas Jane he's like saying you know you're gonna learn something tonight and you know this this night will make you or break you going out with me and it's it's basically though kind of like um you almost kind of get this vibe that Thomas Jane's character is like purposely trying to like scare him off and kind of like show off and like show how bad things can be and put him into kind of like bad situations and like stuff that he they probably shouldn't be doing. And it's kind of like one of those things where it just gets worse and worse for what's going on and like they end up with all sorts of kind of problems happening and everything. A bunch of different people um, pop up in here too. But I thought this was actually a really interesting, you know, police like crime film with all sorts of kind of problems happening. And the next one here is a movie here called Mermaid Down. I, I'm not 100% sure of the company of this one, but I'll have a link below where the company is. But it's like I said, it's a movie here called Mermaid Down. This is a really, really interesting movie. This is basically, though, about like these, these fishermen that are like in this boat saying how they're like determined to catch this mermaid and the guy wants to catch the mermaid and then to take its tail off and sell the sell the tail and sell the mermaid and he wants to make all this money and everything and there's this fisherman who's like nearby and he's kind of watching the whole thing and he sees them like you know out there and they end up catching this mermaid and he sees this and he's like oh I gotta get this mermaid so he goes on there and he like attacks the people he ends up stealing the mermaid from them whose tail was taken off and basically, though, he is like this doctor at this women's psychological, like psych hospital, and uh, it's like uh, he basically takes the mermaid back there, and the mermaid starts growing human legs. But at this hospital, though, it's all these girls there that have all these different kind of things, and like there's even a ghost there, like this ghost of this girl who's there talking to people, and like she doesn't know she's a ghost. It's a, it's a really interesting movie, but basically, though. Um, you know, the girl there that's the mermaid, she starts like, you know, it's, ba it's it's really hard to explain. But it's basically, though, this doctor is doing these weird types of experiments. And, like, uh, these girls are pretty much trapped there with all these things that he's doing. And it's, like, really, really well filmed and really, really interesting movie. But it's basically, though, about all these patients there together and kind of, like, all the stuff that they're going through with the, with the basis of this mermaid there with, you know, with her kind of what's happening with her. But it's a really, like I said, a really interesting movie here. This one has on here a direct... Uh, commentary with the director on this one the next one here is from uh for uh digital media and it's a movie here called dark encounter and this is an uh, an alien science fiction movie and it's basically though it was just like a i think it was a year ago this one girl had gone missing this family's their daughter had con you know she's eight-year-old daughter had totally gone missing they have no clue what had happened to her and they pretty much believe that she may have passed away like something really bad had happened and they've kind of um like kind of getting gathering back together again to kind of remember her and but you know the family though really can't get over this though especially like the father and everything like they really think that that, that something had happened that she's still alive and there's you know, where where is she and it's like driving them crazy and then the one night though they notice this light these bright lights and they go out to like investigate this out into the middle of the woods and they go out there and they have like this weird type of big light that comes like up over them and something happens with a car and basically though they, it's like this alien type movie and they're trying to figure out exactly like what is going on and why and what is this thing and it's like you know this alien type light or whatever this is could have something to do with the daughter's disappearance so they're kind of trying to like look into the whole thing and kind of get to the bottom of the whole thing it's a really really interesting really well 
well done uh, science fiction movie here. Like I said, this one here is called Dark Encounter. The last one here is one I just want to let you guys know is available. This is from uh, Film Rise. It's a movie here called uh, Nighthawks. This one has on here, though, a theatrical trail and a photo gallery. And this one, um, I talked about this one a little while back. And this one's hard to explain, but it's like a group of people that are going out for this party. This guy kind of comes in with this like kind of rich group of these kids, and it's kind of like um, they kind of he falls into this crowd, and it's kind of like these weird things that they're doing, kind of being initiated into this group, and it's kind of like it gets weirder and weirder as this one goes along with this group of people and everything. Like I said though, this one here is called Nighthawks. But anyway though guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing.